Alright, so here we are in the makeshift paint booth again. I've got two relatively heavy coats of uh, Eastwood's epoxy primer on this. And there's a couple areas where you can tell there was some Bondo. Um, I don't know if that's just the way the Bondo kind of absorbed the paint versus the existing primer. The one thing I'm not seeing any of are those weird little craters that we were getting with the Eastwood concourse gun when the paint was splattering. Someone had pointed out that it was possible we had some kind of uh, contamination, silicone or grease or something else maybe in the gun that was spattering out. So I was a little bit concerned about that. Fortunately, it doesn't look like that's the case. So that's good news. Despite kind of having everything plasticked off. And I hear a bug. Um, there's a couple little bits of dust, but again, it's primer. So we're going to sand this a little bit anyways. So I'm very pleased with the way this gun works. Um, it Again, I'm new at this, so any gun that can kind of compensate for my lack of skill uh, is a plus as far as I'm concerned. So money well spent and this primer seemed to go on pretty good. So anyways, I'm rambling. So, so I'll let this sit for another hour and then I'll bring it inside and uh, it says to wait 24 hours before wet sanding, so I guess tomorrow. Okay, so here's our tank after two more coats of primer. Uh, you can see where the Bondo kind of sucks up the paint. So what I'm going to do now is wet sand this. And once that's all cleaned up, and probably tomorrow morning, it's a little bit hot out this afternoon. Um, two more coats of primer. And then assuming I'm not still seeing this kind of Bondo staining or whatever you want to call it, uh, we should be ready for the top coat. So turned out pretty good. Um, little, couple little bits of dust here and there, but I'm not getting any of that splatter or pitting that I was getting with the, the Eastwood gun. So real happy with this uh, Devilbus finish line gun. So here's another angle here. You can really see all the little kind of spots where that Bondo is, but according to what I've read, this is pretty normal. It's just because the Bondo is so porous, it, it soaks up the primer a little bit more than the metal is. So uh, this is Eastwood's epoxy primer. They recommend not dry sanding um, within the first few days. So that's why I'm gonna use uh, wet sanding. They said you can do that within 24 hours. So see if I can kind of even this out, seal it up one more time with another coat of epoxy. Okay, so I just got done uh, with a quick wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper. And it looks like that took care of all of the little, I guess, surface inconsistencies where we had the Bondo um, and the, the primer over top of that. So, all right guys, this is the big day. Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous about spraying this black. Um, but it's, I get about an hour each morning before it gets too hot and we're outside of the um, temperature window for this stuff. So I gotta do it today or uh, according to the weather I may have to wait a few more days. So whether I'm ready or not today we're gonna give it a shot. So I did get two more coats of primer on the tank yesterday and um, I just took some 800 grit sandpaper took out a couple little dust spots where stuff had settled. Uh, I'm gonna wipe that down, get it hung up. Um, I need to put the plastic sheeting up on the uh, tent. And then I'm gonna mix this up. This is, uh, like I said, Eastwood's uh, three to one single stage urethane. The color is Boulevard Black. Uh, I actually bought this a couple of years ago, but I hadn't opened it. Uh, I opened it yesterday and everything, lo everything looks fine. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try. I only have the medium speed activator. So the window they recommend is 70 to 80 degrees. So we're about 75 already this morning. It, uh, it's about 730 in the morning. So I'm hoping, um, I'm going to try to do three coats of this, and there's a 10 minute flash period between each coat. So I'm going to get that mixed up, um, put these couple coats on, and then we'll, we'll take a look at the results. 
Well, that didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. Um, the gun worked well, the paint laid out good. The problem I had was just the rapid temperature rise inside that tent. Uh, when I got things set up, by the time I got the plastic sheeting up on the sides, um, because of the where I have to position it in our driveway, uh, as soon as the sun gets up over the trees, uh, it's beating directly down on that tent. So by the time I was laying the first coat on, we were already up around 80 degrees, even though outside of the tent, it was still in the lower 70s. So I was already pushing the limits of the hardener's temperature range, which was 70 to 80 degrees when I got started. Um, I should have known better to just try another day, uh, but I was getting impatient. I had everything set up. I had the paint mixed. So the first coat laid down really well and there's a 10 minute flash period between each coat and each time I walked into that tent, I've got a little digital thermometer I keep in there when I'm painting, uh, it was another 10 degrees hotter in the tent. By the time I laid the third coat down, it was 104 degrees inside the tent. So at that point I was committed, so I just proceeded. I did a total of three coats. In some areas where I laid it down really heavy, uh, it was still able to kind of level out. Here's an example of that here. Um, it looks actually really good. Very little orange peel, uh, but then in other areas, I mean, just next to this, let's see if we can get it to focus. You can kind of see there, it was going on a little bit too dry, and because of the heat, it just was starting to set up before it could level out. So I've got quite a bit of this. You can kind of see that in the center of the screen there. Um, so it's it's not a finish that I'm going to be happy with, especially, I mean, we're into this project going on five years now, so um, I'm not just going to leave it like this. So I think my plan at this point, it's supposed to rain most of the weekend, so while it's rainy out, I'm going to wet sand this just in the areas that aren't going to be covered up by the chrome panels. I don't care what this looks like. I don't care what the underside looks like because you're not going to see that anyways. But I am going to wet sand the, the kind of dry looking areas smooth and then I'll kind of scuff that up and I'm going to lay probably at least one heavy coat, maybe two. I'm going to do the other coats with it in this position. That way I can get a better angle of the, the whole top side of the tank and hopefully make more even passes. So hopefully that will also help improve things. So I'll just set it on a sawhorse or something similar. Um, and also the way I had it set up, it was really awkward. So it's, you got a picture, it's kind of, it's hanging like, like this in the tent. And by the time you get to the the, the front and the, the underside here, it's just a really awkward gun angle. So um, again, I'm sure with a more experience, I'd be able to compensate for that. Um, I just don't have that experience right now. So, so overall, I'm really happy with the paint. Again, it was my impatience and lack of knowledge here that, that caused this issue. It had nothing to do with the paint.
Okay, we finally got a morning where it's not already 80 degrees outside as I'm getting started here. So I think today is going to be the day we take our second shot at this uh, black top coat here. So you just saw me sanding back um, the, the, the problem areas we had uh, and I was using 800 grit and a little bit of soapy water and then I took one of these maroon um, I don't know scotch bright pads basically uh, and scuffed up the rest of the tank just so the new coats of paint have something to, to grab onto. We got a good starting point here hopefully with the cooler temperatures uh, it's still actually a little bit too cool this morning to paint so I'm gonna take my time getting stuff set up I guess it's been a couple days. Uh, I left this hanging up in the shed for, I want to say three or four days, just to make sure it had plenty of time to set up before I started handling it. Um, when I put the paint on, everything looked excellent. Um, other than a few little bits of dust, which again, I'm not in an actual paint booth. It's going to happen no matter how careful I try to be. Um, other than that, everything seemed to lay out pretty good. But looking at it now, and looking at some of the video I shot um, while it was still up in my little paint tent thing, um, I'm seeing what I believe is called solvent pop. So it's basically, and I'm not sure if the camera's going to focus on it, it's basically a bunch of teeny tiny little kind of pinholes. Um, and that's caused by I guess a couple different things uh, or a combination of multiple things uh, one of them being the air pressure and the gun being too low and it can also be caused by um, either too heavy of kind of subsequent coats or not waiting long enough between coats which is uh, any of these things are entirely possible here so I, as a side note here I always do these little spray out cards when I'm painting and just out of curiosity I wanted to see um, how these things hold up to fuel and other solvents so uh, yesterday morning I dripped some gasoline on this and let it set overnight and I also did it with uh, some of this Startron this stuff is actually a little bit more corrosive in my experience than, than gasoline so did that as well uh, let them set wiped it off with some soapy water and dried it off and to my surprise um, there's not a single mark left from that stuff so that gives me a little bit more confidence in this paints uh, longevity uh, it's always a big concern is getting fuel on um, some of these older tanks I've dripped fuel stabilizer on this CB350 tank here and it left some kind of hazing that I have not been able to buff out so, and then being black, this tank's going to show everything. All right, guys, let's take a look at painting attempt number three here. I decided to give it one more shot after all that, uh, I guess, solvent pop or whatever that actually was that you saw a few minutes ago. So I did sand this back down again with 800 grit. I did the steps a little bit different this time. Um, I wiped it down with the uh, wax and grease remover last night just to give it plenty of time for any of that to evaporate just to make sure that wasn't a possible issue of that solvent pop we were having uh, I got started about 5 30 this morning so I beat the sunrise so it was nice and cool in the tent um, well relative to the 
temperature we've been having. It was about 75 this morning at 5.30. Um, but I managed to get one good coat on before it started heating up. It's, we're up to about 77 degrees. Uh, it's about a half an hour later. And I am seeing a couple uh, teeny little spots. I'll just try to pan over here. But there are some areas like right here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Um, looks pretty good. So last time there was tons and tons of those little tiny pinpricks. This time I'm just seeing a handful in certain spots. Um, another problem I'm having, and this just comes down to technique, is I don't know if it's the shape of the tank, but basically no matter where I'm painting, I'm getting some amount of overspray on another part of the tank. So as I'm making passes along the top, it's kind of dropping overspray along the side here. So um, it's not a lot of orange peel. This paint actually laid down pretty good. It's just every once in a while there'll be a spot where I make sure I don't actually put the camera in the paint. I'm trying to get that to focus. There's two spots here. Oh, I'm sorry, the camera doesn't like all these reflections. But anyways, there's a couple spots that are definitely going to be sand and, and buffed out. But this coat, unless we keep getting more of these pinpricks as this cures, um, I'm much happier with than the last one. So either way, we had a total of probably close to six coats, maybe a little less if you factor in the sanding uh, between attempts. Should be plenty to wet sand and buff if I decide to go that route. So I'm just going to leave this alone for a couple hours and then I'll hang it up in the shed like I've been doing, give it a day or two before I start messing with it. Uh, I just want to give you guys a quick, uh, quick preview here.
All right, so I've been working on this for about 20 minutes now. Uh, again, I'm working with the mother's uh, rubbing compound, and I'm kind of going back and forth between this sponge and microfiber towels. Um, so as you can see, it's it's coming out pretty good. So this side obviously is the one I've been working on. Here's the side um, I haven't started yet. So this is the 2000 grit uh, wet sanded. So, so far so good. Pretty happy with it. In certain light you can still see um, some fine scratches. So I'm not sure if the finishing polish will take those out or if I'll have to switch back to the rubbing compound to take those out. Uh, this is the first time for me going through these steps, so it's kind of a little bit of more trial and error here. But definitely looks much better after the, the wet sanding and buffing than it did um, just straight after the paint application. So on this side I've still got to do, you can see it's still kind of hazy down here. This is about as far as I've gone so far. And then I only sanded down to about here because when this is on the bike, uh, you're not going to be seeing that anyway, so I'm not going to bother uh, doing the entire tank. Basically just the main parts that are going to be visible. Uh, here we are after about another half an hour of um, buffing with the uh, mother's rubbing compound. Um, to be honest, even at this point, it's got a better shine than just about every bike I own. Um, so I'm excited to see what the next uh, step does. That's the finishing polish. So I'm going to take a look at the instructions, see if I need to wash this down first. Um, but you can see just how sharp the reflection is. This turned out pretty amazing, to be honest with you. Um, quite a bit better already than I had expected. Alright, I'm going to move on to this finishing polish here. Uh, I'm going to skip the sponges and just use some clean microfiber towels. So let me give you a quick before. Uh, like I just said a second ago, I mean, this is far shinier than any other bike I own so I could probably stop here and I would never know the difference but I've got this stuff here so I figure I'll give it a shot I'm going to keep going over the rest of the tank with this uh, finishing polish. One thing I did notice is it requires a lighter touch, uh, even with these microfiber towels. Um, these are brand new out of the package each time. I'm not just going in and rinsing them off. Um, and I was getting tiny, when I was pressing hard, I was getting tiny little swirls that weren't wiping off. So I went back over everything. Um, with just a really light touch, basically just enough pressure to uh, keep the towel in place under my hand. And that seemed to take those little swirls out and seemed to be um, doing the trick here getting this finish. So the difference between this side, and again I spent maybe five minutes at most, uh, and this other side, I can't really see it. Um, in certain lights, there are areas still over here where I haven't done it. There's teeny little swirl marks um, that hopefully this will take out.
All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I uh, hope you learned something throughout this process. I know I certainly did. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.